Almost every website can spy on you. That's just the internet. Luckily, your browser can have a major impact on preventing this, but every browser nowadays claims to be the most private. So who's lying? Today, let's cover an open source tool that clearly outlines exactly how private and secure each browser is so you can choose what works best for you. This video is sponsored by Delete Me, a service that actively monitors people searching websites to check for any of your personal information. People searching websites are no good. They extensively keep tabs on everyone's personal information from your name to your phone numbers to your emails and even your home address. And the process to remove this information can be tiresome and not always foolproof. We've reviewed Delete Me in the past, and it's definitely a useful tool to assist you on this journey. When you register for Delete Me, you give them your information, handing trust to them to actively remove data from those sites for you, so you can use your time for really anything better in your life. My experience using them the last year and a half has been incredible, and even after I did the cleanup process manually before I joined, Delete Me actually picked up a couple things I missed. On top of this, they're hooking our audience up you with 20% off. It's a great service. Go check them out down below. They're doing a lot of good stuff. And again, you save a bit of money if you go through our link. So check that all down in the description. When you visit privacytests.org, you're given several browser options with basic pass and fail marks for each test. Click on each entry to see what it is, then see how each browser performs. For example, let's say you want to figure out what this is. First off, fingerprinting is essentially a way to uniquely identify your browser. And if you read this, it's gonna more or less tell you the same thing. Every browser is unique in its own way and certain things about your browser are able to fingerprint you to a greater extent. If you're curious about what this first test is, you just click this and it says, this is the height of the user's screen in pixels. The height of your screen can be used to fingerprint you and this is going to tell you which of these browsers were able to pass this and it also gives you the data result. So make sure you click around because you can actually get a lot of data and it tells you exactly what's going on everywhere. Some of these things are very technical, but some aren't, like testing how cookies are handled, cache, HTTPS, Tor, and more. The information on the left and the search engine to research can be a massive help in figuring this out. Regarding browser options, there's desktop browsers and mobile browsers, as well as private mode tests and nightly tests for non-public releases to give you a plethora of options to go through on all devices. Now the data itself isn't perfect. For example, Tor enabled only checks if Tor is used by default, so Brave fails despite Brave having a non-default Tor mode. But there's no non-default Tor mode test to demo that. There's also a project for Firefox called Arkenfox, which has countless options for better privacy and security, none of which are included in the Firefox section that would surely improve its performance. There are countless examples. What are the speed of the security updates for each of these projects? If LibreWolf falls behind on security updates, that may be a genuine issue for certain people. Is a browser open source? What operating systems is each browser supported by? Is a browser cross compatible with the operating systems you use? What about harder to test issues like overall fingerprinting resistance just as a whole? I'm not using these examples as ways to trash the site, but rather just as food for thought so people don't assume that this site is everything. You're gonna find a lot of little things like this and that's the limitation of taking this wide scale systematic approach. You lose some nuance. The best thing though is you can run these tests yourself. It's all open source with instructions on how to do so, meaning you can test something like Arkenfox with your own configuration or Brave with a Tor window. To run tests yourself manually, go up here to GitHub, go ahead and go into scripts, and you open the readme file, and these are all the instructions and usage you need to run these tests yourself. It's not as easy as clicking a button, but for those who are more technical and want to check all of this yourself, you definitely can. If the manual route seems too complex, there's this third-party site that's also open source for an easier on-demand test inside your browser of choice. This site is not formally part of the privacytests.org project, but it does allow you to run several of the tests. For example, GPC is a test here on privacytest.org. If you go to the automated site, you'll see that there's a global privacy control test that you can run. And then you can check for details and it'll give you the result. If you go here, you see it has a similar result. So again, this is not a one-to-one -one test, but it is a way for you to quickly check a couple things on your own inside any browser. With the combination of these tools, you can test countless browser configurations and directly compare browsers to see how they stack up, which has just never been possible before. 
Now regarding your browser choices and what you should use, the beautiful thing this tool demonstrates is almost every browser wins at something and loses at something else. So we encourage people like yourself to be open-minded with your browser choice and even use multiple browsers if necessary. There's no rules against that. With that said, if you want some clear-cut places to get started, Brave, LibreWolf, and Tor really bring it home in a majority of tests for desktop, and Mole and Bromite also kicked butt on mobile, alongside Brave and Tor on pretty much all platforms. But that doesn't make them the best choice for everyone. This is just data, and like all data, you should combine it with other priorities to make a decision. Brave might overwhelmingly win in one section, but LibreWolf doesn't support the Chromium monopoly. Brave syncs bookmarks without a central account, but maybe Edge integrates with a Microsoft feature you can't live without. Your needs are valid and should be taken into account so you can pick the browser or browsers that best fit your lifestyle. I do want to mention that the developer for this site was actually hired by Brave after they developed the site. Some people, as you can imagine in the privacy community, lashed out. But every objective piece of information tells us it does not matter. These are open source tests you can run by yourself to verify the accuracy of the information and the site is literally just data, it's not even recommending anything. So while I think we should continue being vigilant, it's really ridiculous to dismiss this wonderful site and wonderful resource for this reason alone. If all this data and choosing a private browser business is too hard for you and you're a person who just wants clear cut recommendations from us, we just made a video on alternatives to Chrome that you can check out right here that are going to cover the best options for all you Chrome users out there just looking for a better option right now. We'll see you over there in that video and we'll see you next time on TechLore. Thank you for watching.